Okay. Uh, I figured I'd show you the shop now. Started getting the lathe parts in here. I got the counter shaft already hung up, ready to go. And I've just been playing with this. Uh, a viewer of mine actually, let me get over here. Yeah. A viewer of mine actually commented and helped me figure out, or more or less found, the half nut design for this lathe. So I got this in here, and now it's engaged now. The pin's not lined up, so it's that it shows that it is working. The pin on the handle and the pin for the taper pin is off. But it is working. So now I'm going to print out another one without slot and stuff in the bottom of it and Yeah, I'll print out another one with the slot without the slot in the bottom and do the thing as lost PLA casting. I'll probably do two of them at a time to get it done up, but it does engage. So half nut part is halfway there. I've just got to take and cast that out and maybe zinc. I may do a Zamek. It's a good material for half nuts and stuff. Or I might do it in brass. I'm not 100% sure yet. I may try it in both. Just to see which one works best. And which one pours and turns out. So, I'll take and print this out a little bit oversized and to deal with shrinkage and we'll start doing it in the plaster and sand mix 50-50 yeah, sand and plaster alright let's go get started on the, another project okay yeah, I got these all sandblasted and ready to go I got Bondo on them to fill in the splotches or the blowholes and stuff because there was a few blowholes in the castings that were pretty nasty. Um, they're ready to be primered and painted now. I'll get to that. But today we're going to make these just vi anti vibration feet. I was going to make a bunch of them for the shaper and mm -hmm. the other stuff. And I figured I'd do them. In this box here, there's hockey pucks and bolts and everything else, so let's get to it. Okay, this is just the old girl. This is an old Kennedy and Auto number 24. I've dated it back to about 1902. It still has the original flat belts and stuff on it, or the original flat belt pulleys, so. Um, I took a center finder, or one of the ones that have the, yeah, just a center finder, and put it on here, so, I've set it down so that it stops just below the top of that, which is a good place, actually, so...
just using a 7 8 Forstner bit because the nuts or a half inch nut will fit right into that so that it creates a pocket inside there. That's all I'm doing. Okay, just to set the table, you just take flip this lever here and move it up or down to where you need it and flip it back up to lock the table. Now, I did the rest of these and I forgot to press record. So, since the a forstner bit took and created that dimple in the middle the drill bit will want to find that dimple so it makes it real easy to center it Good. Go back over and start putting these together. These are just pieces of all thread that I cut off at the ends and rounded them just slightly to make it easy to get the nuts on. There. Now when you tighten it down it'll suck it up flush and it's below the surface there. I usually go a little bit deeper because but yeah these work good too as long as it's below the surface at least an eighth of an inch because if you have a heavy equipment on it it's going to compress just a little bit or something heavier on it. I just have a big fender washer here and there it sucks up quite a bit more. That's all there is to it. Just easy ones. The longer ones here are going to go for the shaper. I was making these for the lathe and realized I don't like them on the lathe so I'll do them on the shaper. Okay I got all of them done over here. Um, they do set quite a bit flush below the surface, so with the stuff pressing down on it, it'll never even come onto the surface. Um, I was going to take and just machine up a big disc to go on the top of here, but I'm not using them for leveling feet, just they can be used as leveling feet if they have the big disc on top, just a piece of like quarter inch. 5 16 inch thick steel put on top instead of the washer here and it will work fine. I'm just doing it because I want anti-vibration 
pads and something so it won't scratch up the floor in the shop when stuff goes in. They do work pretty good and these are for the shaper so that the thing running back and forth won't take and scratch up the floor any. And it'll just stay where it is. And also these absorb vibration like crazy so they any vibration in your shaper or mill or whatever is going to eat that rather than transferring it into the floor. Yeah, they can be done in different ways if you want them that way, just, yeah. Okay, it's getting hotter than anything out here, so I'm going to call it. Thanks for watching. See ya.